Hello, I'm Thomas with Geon Technologies, and welcome to Waveform Usage Part 1, The Basics. To ensure the focus is on waveforms, please download a copy of the Waveform Usage Code Session from Geon Tech's GitHub repository. This will provide you with a node, a device, and a component that you would not otherwise have. Along with that path will be an install script you can use to automatically load these items into your SDR root on a Red Hawk system. Also, this tutorial will make use of the Aussie Utils Red Hawk and Sandbox modules in the Python shell. In Red Hawk 1.9, the Sandbox offers several features above and beyond what are available in the IDE. However, for this tutorial, we'll really be using the two for introspecting into a running Red Hawk system and executing a few plots. As you may already know, Waveforms contain and often connect generic sub-modules called components to build user applications that utilize resources within the Red Hawk domain. These sub-modules are launched into the domain to distribute the application's processing across available system processors. From this session, you can expect to create a waveform, add, connect, and modify components, learn about implementations and dependencies, start a domain and a node, launch and control a waveform, establish a connection to a device manually, and automate that same connection using allocation. This overall project is going to ingest a linear frequency modulated signal, which has been further FM modulated. To recover the signal, we'll need a waveform to tune and remove the second FM modulation. First, let's create a new SCA waveform project and call it Chirp FM DMOD. We'll leave it in the default location, and as you can see from this panel, you have several options for reusing waveforms as templates for other waveforms. Pressing Next, we'll pick the first component, also called the Assembly Controller. Its role will be to forward waveform commands to other components within that waveform. It's also the first component the application factory will attempt to deploy. We'll talk more about the factory in a moment. All said, don't sweat the assembly controller decision much, however. The assignment can be changed later. For our design, we'll use the tune filter decimate, so select it and press finish. From the panel of components to the right, drag the AM FM PM baseband DMOD component into the waveform. I'll be calling this DMOD from here on out. Connecting them is easy. Simply drag from the output port to the input port. Components have properties that can be viewed and manipulated from the Waveform's Properties tab. Here you can see all properties for all components within the Waveform. Alternatively, you could simply click on the component in the diagram view to show its properties in the lower panel of the IDE. Let's modify the desired output rate and filter bandwidth for the tune filter decimate to be 150 kHz and 15 kHz, respectively. You'll notice that each value is now bold-faced. This lets you know that the default value is not being used for this component's properties. As mentioned previously, you'll also have the ability to change startup order and assignment of the assembly controller. Here you can see the DMOD component is number one. It will start first after the tune filter decimate. Up until now, we've been tossing around these terms deploying and launching, as well as the term application factory. The factory's role is to resolve dependencies of the waveform's components. These dependencies drive which loadable or executable device is selected to receive the individual components. Here we see the dependencies of the tune filter decimate component. Dependencies are mapped to individual implementations of components, which can have many implementations. During deployment, the application factory can cherry pick which implementation to deploy if a target accepts the request to be allocated. Some example dependencies are what operating system, the processor architecture, and the amount of memory you know the component will require. Additionally, soft package dependencies are possible, which provides a way to deliver additional libraries with a component without having to install and maintain every possible library combination on every Red Hawk node in your system. And speaking of which, Let's take a look at what's inside the chirp node by exploring the target SDR in the SCA Explorer pane. 
Here you can see we have a GPP and our Chirp FM device, which is our simple signal generator. This GPP will be the only executable device in the system, so it will ultimately be receiving all components when the waveforms are deployed and launched. But before we dig any deeper, we'll need a domain running so that we can start our node. Both of those require your OmniWarp services to be running, which, besides proper configuration, requires an active network connection. If you have all of these set up, you can use Restart OmniWarp script from our repository to easily clear logs and restart the services. If you're certain everything is up to snuff, we can return to the IDE and launch the domain in Node. Simply right-click on the target SDR and click Launch. Here we can specify that both the domain, named Redhawk Dev, and the node are launched at the same time. We also have the option of specifying debug levels that will appear in the resulting console windows. And speaking of those consoles, this button allows you to swap between the two for easily stopping, shutting down, and clearing out resources. Once we've reached this point, you can confirm success by expanding the Red Hawk Dev domain in the SEA Explorer to show the Chirp node. Notice how both devices state that each has started. This means we're ready to use our waveform. Now you may have been tempted to right-click on the domain and launch your waveform, but if you do, you'll see it isn't listed. To install a waveform using the IDE, we need to drag the project to the target SDR. This copies the file from your workspace to the SDR root on your local file system. We can now launch the waveform. The first options you see, besides which waveform, is whether or not to automatically start. Leave this unchecked for now and hit Next. Here is your last chance to specify initial property values for your components before deployment occurs. Press Next. This panel gives you the ability to designate specific manual deployment relationships between components and devices. Press Finish. And this is what success is going to look like. We gain a new diagram of our waveform with additional controls. We can also expand the domain's waveforms list to see our instances online but not running. To start the waveform manually, use the controls at the top of the screen. Your options are Start, Stop, and Release. Each will apply to every component in the waveform since the command goes through the assembly controller. Press Start and you see both components start. Right-clicking on a component, you can also independently control them. Here, I've stopped the DMOD component without interrupting the running state of the other component. This is because all components are deployed independently as separate threads on the target devices, or in our case, we only have one device. But they are still independent. Let's pause for a moment to sandbox the current state. Open a terminal in a Python shell. From Aussie Utils, import Redhawk and the Sandbox SB. To access the running domain, use the attach method and the name of the domain, in our case, Redhawk Dev. We can then view the names of all applications and index to them, as you see here. Similarly, we can access the components on the comps property. Notice the difference of using name versus underscore instance name. This uniqueness occurs when a waveform is deployed because every instance of that waveform is a clone of the original and yet every component requires a unique instance ID within the domain. Consequently, this similar truth exists for nodes whereby you can define one node and then easily clone it to other systems simply by updating the device instance IDs and the nodes ID. Let's plot the data at the tune filter decimate. Recall it's the assembly controller, which is component zero in the array. Use the sandbox to create a PSD plot and connect it from the user to the provider. Obviously a rather dull demo since we have yet to make the connection to the hardware. So let's do that now here in the sandbox. The domain also provides properties for device managers as well as devices. So we'll simply find the index for the device we need and connect it to the tune filter decimate component.
and we should see our chirp shifting in frequency. And that's just dandy, but it was manual. There must be a better way to handle this, right? And there is. It's called user's device. But to use it, we'll need to modify our waveform and reinstall it. So first, release the waveform and navigate to the chirpfmdmod sad.xml file. The user's device relationship creates a waveform level dependency which can be met by any device type, not just executable or loadable. When the dependency is resolved, all connections referencing it are made using the associated port name pairs. Both changes will require XML edits, which you'll find in the code blocks for an easy copy-paste. Our first step is to add the relationship that will attempt to allocate or configure the device to match our described needs. Towards the bottom of the file, you'll find the closing connections tag. Our user's device dependencies list and the one dependency should be added here, as shown. Here you can see the unique ID for the user's device relationship, device underscore connection. Any connections within this waveform requiring the same device can reference this ID and reuse it. Our relationship uses one property reference having the globally unique identifier for device kind and our chirp FM's value, chirp. You can also use structure references and other property formats to create your ID value pairs. Next, we need to insert a new connect interface port pair that will point at our relationship's ID. The connect interface structure also has its own unique ID within the waveform as well. In this case, we tacked on an underscore one, arbitrarily. It also has uses port and provides port references just like all the other connect interface references. Our difference here is that from the uses side, we are using the device used by application uses ref ID tag to point at the user's device relationship ID. The provides side has a component instantiation ref to point at the appropriate component. And in both cases, the port names to connect are provided. That concludes the tuple for connecting a port in a waveform to a port in a node. If the user's device can be resolved, then the port names are checked, and if they are correct, the connection is established automatically. Save the waveform and reinstall it onto the target SDR. Relaunch and start the waveform as you did previously. Over in the chirp node, expand the chirp FM1 instance and its port you'll see our connection interface ID listed here. Next, open a terminal, Python, and again import Redhawk and SB from Aussie Utils. Following the same procedure as before, we get a reference to the tune filter decimate component, a PSD plotter, connect the two, and start the plot. As you can see, we are connected automatically. This brings us to the end of this session on waveform usage, the basics. As a brief recap, we covered creating waveforms as well as adding and modifying components, we discussed startup order, the assembly controller, and the application factory. We then set up a system and launched our waveform. From there, we used the sandbox to manually connect the waveform to our hardware. And finally, we set up a user's device relationship to replace our manual connection with an automatic connection based on allocation and configuration. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Thomas with Geon Technologies. Please feel free to contact us for more information as well as in-class training.